pencil sitting on a table. The pencil is made up of molecules, which are basically atoms, a basic unit of a chemical's makeup. They are linked together by things called an atomic bond or a bond. Atoms are made up by three subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons have another name, nucilion, because they make up the nucleus or the core of the atom. What makes up protons and neutrons? The topic of this mini-doc. Quarks, my friends. Quarks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is Mr. Murray Gelman and Mr. George Zwig. Both these men theorized or thought up quarks in 1964, but they weren't working together when they first theorized quarks, yet they still spontaneously produced this crazy idea, this theory of quarks' existence. In later years, their theory was looked into a bit further and quarks were actually discovered. Now there was numerical, quantitative proof that quarks exist. It basically, without all the nerd talk, that means that there was actual evidence of quarks' existence with numbers. Now let's get technical. There are six different types or flavors in, again, nerd talk, uh, of quarks. Those six flavors being up, down, top, bottom, strange, and charm. As I said before, protons and neutrons are made from quarks. There is a certain number of quarks and certain types of quarks that make up protons and neutrons, the types being up and down quarks. There are three quarks in protons and neutrons. The proton has two up quarks and one down quark. The neutron is the opposite, two down quarks and one up quark, which is what makes up the neutron. The fact that protons and neutrons have three quarks that make them up puts them in the family or the classification of baryons. The baryons are a classification or group of subatomic particles which are made up by three quarks. If the subatomic particle in question is made up of two quarks, then it would be called a meson. If it was made up of four to five quarks, then it would be called a hadron. And if you watch the show The Big Bang Theory, you probably have heard the term hadron before, as it's talked a lot about on the show. The up and down quark particles are the two most stable and strongest of the quark particles. The other quark particles, the top, bottom, strange, and charm, are a lot, uh, a lot more common to decay, decompose, basically be broken up and destroyed. They will then absorb into the up and down quark flavors. 1964 was the year when only three of the six quark particles were theorized, those being the up, down, and strange quark particles. The up quark, the lightest of all the quarks, was discovered in 1968 by the SLAC, S-L-A-C, as how you spell it, SLAC Institute, uh, and theorized by Gelman and Zwig in 1964, as was the down quark flavor. This quark was also discovered by the Slack Institute in 68 and theorized by Gelman and Zwig in 64. Like the up and down quark particles, the flavor strange was theorized by Murray Gelman and George Zwig in 1964 and discovered by the Slack Institute in 68. The top, charm, and bottom quark particles came up later. 
The top quirk was theorized in 1973 by Makoto Kobayashi and Tashidi Maskawa. The top quirk was discovered in 1995 by a collaboration by the DO experiment and CDF, which stands for Collider Detector at Fermilab. The quirk flavor charm was theorized in 1970 by Sheldon Gasho, John Lilopoulos, and Luciano Mayani. In 1974, four years later after it was theorized, Mr. Samuel Ting and Burton Richard discovered the charm quark particle. The quark flavor bottom was theorized by the same minds behind the theorization of the top quark particle, Makoto Kobayashi and Tashidi Maskawa. The bottom quark was discovered in 1977 by Leon M. Letterman. Alright, so, so far we've learned about words like flavor, baryon, hadron, meson, quark, which is, even that's a, I guess, a new word for some of us. But, uh, but this next part might get a little bit technical and a little bit hard to understand. I'm going to try and simplify it as much as I can because this is what the entire video's purpose is, is to simplify this really complicated stuff to, I don't know, make you sound smarter around your friends. That, that's what I use information for, you know. So there are three different ways that you can describe a quark. You can describe a quark's mass, its spin, and its charge. So now we're going to dig in a bit deeper into the, now we're going to dig in a bit deeper into the, those three things that I said before, the mass, charge, and spin of a quark and how it helps describe and classify a quark. All that and more on next week's episode same time. Please do like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.